he seemed pretty pumped um, for the tournament. And yeah. uh, I guess um, one of the things that uh, he had kind of said was just that he felt like it was a good weekend for him, a good weekend for the stack. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's accurate. I mean, I think I mean obviously it looks like we're underway. <clears throat> Turn one ink moth nexus. Yeah, We've I... seen Jason with that several times, and right. that usually bodes very well for him. Yeah, and remember Stepan Sukic from Croatia said that this was the best creature in the deck. And I apologize, Mr. Sukic, if I'm saying your name wrong. I I, uh, I it's, it's hard to pronounce some of those Croatian names. I think uh, the, the trivia question is going to be the three that the Croatian players that you've been naming all weekend. I think that's, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we have like one person answer it right. So a so seachrome yeah, coast into a pond over Preston Stone. The uh, the trivia question will probably be the phonetic pronunciation of these names and then the way I have been saying them. There you go. So we see Rune Chanter's Pike, Augur of Bolas. I'm whispering because I don't want to, <laughs> to carry. Augur yeah. of Bolas, Rune Chanter's Pike, and Vapor Snag on the top for Preston. Now, Preston Stone's deck, remember both of these players have access to each other's deck list before the match begins. Preston Stone's deck has Restoration Angel and Geist as well as uh, Rune Chanter's Pike, which me leads me to believe it's going to have a little bit more land, and oh my gosh, it's got 19. A little bit more than some of the, one of the other decks I think we saw yesterday with 18 lands. I believe we may have seen a couple of decks with 18 lands, but... Uh... Turn to Ikerclaw Mirror. Glacial Fortress from Preston. You can see the Vapor Snag from uh, in Preston's hand. Icar Claw is probably going to come on in by itself. That's my guess. Now, unless Jason has a a attack. He's got a Rancor in his hand, but he doesn't cast it. One of the things I've been watching happen a lot with Infect players is if they play it um, overly aggressively, it's very easy for them to get taken down by gut shots and vapor snags, when really, you don't have to go about doing that. Now, all, look the, at this. all the eggy wigs in one yeah, basket. Is yeah. <laughs> he's thinking about casting that Rancor right now, but uh, he's like, you know what, I'm not going to do it. And guess what happens? Oh, wait. Do I want... Um... Yeah, that's fine. I think he's going to say that's fine. He gave a little knowing look to the camera. We know okay. that he has no way to stop that Vapor Snag. But importantly, you'll notice <laughs> he did not try to cast that Rancor. He almost did, but then mm -hmm. he was like, you know what? Don't want to lose it. Yeah. This is a real key for you players out there who are thinking about playing Green Infect. You have to be willing to not go for it sometimes. Right, you just put yourself in a situation uh, where you, know, you just get blown out by one spell like a Vapor Snag. Uh, I mean, there's a, a lot of cards in the deck that are set up to protect your creatures from that sort of thing, but, you know, you there's the potential for a blowout any time you're going to load your guy up with pump spells and, uh, you know, and, and auras. And look, he's got a bunch of Rancors in his hand, but he just comes in for one again. Yeah, well, at this point, actually, I love love this plan from Jason. Uh, he's now look at that mana leak, so, and now he might as well put it down there. Yeah, so now he's going to go mm -hmm. ahead and play the Rancor because his uh, second Icar Claw Mirror was mana leaked. So I actually like this because it's kind of like slow and steady. He has no pressure on him from Preston. So right now, you know, he's he's got a clock, and I, I, you know, uh, no, no pressure from Preston. He doesn't need to just go all in. Now Preston's deck is um, has a couple of Augur in it, and they're actually very powerful in this matchup. So Ponder finds... I'm sorry, it wasn't Ponder, it was Augur. I mean, Augur, Augur finds, finds Ponder. Ponder. You also saw Restoration Angel and I believe a land, which got shipped to the bottom there. And he's keeping a Vapor Snag up, it looks like. Now I could see Preston thinking to himself, this is the moment to Vapor Snag, so that Jason does not untap and have access to a um, Apostle's, Apostle's blessing. blessing. Yeah. Earlier we were talking about the conflicting reports over who has the advantage in this matchup. So he, he does actually go for the Vapor Snag now. I like that. I like so that a lot. Both it's cards. Conservative, I, and I think you need to be conservative against this deck. Both cards back into Jason's hand. Draws a wild, wild defiance. defiance. That's a good card. Yeah. 
so Jason has a window here to resolve that wild defiance or he might rather put a threat on the table which I agree that's seems like uh, I'd rather have a threat on the table. Iker Clamir and point. once again Rancor. Didn't have the gut shot before, I don't think you have it now. Yeah, so those two were vapor snagged right back on the table. And we see, is that, oh no, I thought it was another vapor snag, but it was actually just that island. <laughs> Taking a peek at Preston's hand, I can see Rune Chanter's Pike, Thought Scour, Ponder, I believe a phantasmal image. Yeah, there's definitely an image in there. He casts that ponder. And sees probe, ponder, and... I think he's keeping that. Palatial fortress. The thing about the probe, mm -hmm. the two life basically doesn't matter. Right, and So it's just, just free. like free, what so, you got? Probe you. Let me see what you got over there, guy. And we've got Rancor, Rancor. 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 GSZ and Wild Defiance. Yep. If you're just joining us, I'm Joey Pasco in the booth with Adrian Sullivan, and we're covering the, I'm sorry, the semifinals of the StarCityGames.com Open Series here in Denver, Colorado, between Jason Bolkowski and Preston Stone. Jason on Infect and Preston on Blue White Delver. This is game one, and uh, so far, a slow start kind of from both players. Not a lot of pressure from Preston. Actually, no yeah. pressure from Preston. And The slow start does favor Preston in this matchup, though. Yeah, I agree. Uh, however, I think, you know, Jason right now has a fairly significant threat on the table in the form of an Icker Claw Mirror with a Ranker. And uh, don't forget about that Ink Moth Nexus that's hanging out over there as well. Preston attacks, wow. Very possible he's gonna image the Ickerclaw mirror. Oh, nope, just lets it happen. So attack from Augur of Bolas leaves him fairly open, depending on what we... I didn't see anything in yeah. his hand that can interact. Well, I mean, part of Preston's problem is that Iker Claw Mirror, when blocked with that Rancor on it, becomes a 5-3. Yeah, he, he uh, doesn't actually want to block it. Or blocking it, I guess, saves him one poison and loses the, uh, the Augur. Now, Jason has drawn a forest... It's a question mark of whether he wants to even lay it and let Preston know. Yeah, that's what he drew, exactly. I, I think unless he really needs that mana for something, well, well he decides go. he does, Here's so he plays the forest. In. So, oh, he vapor does snag. have a vapor snag. Wow. wow. Three vapor snags. I mean, that is, uh, if you're going to beat Infect with Delver, three vapor snags in the first four turns of the game. Is he going to green suns for one here? Green suns for one, get a glistener. So diversifying his threat package is Jason Bolkowski. So glistener elf, Iker Claw Mirror now back on the table. And again, that Ink Moth Nexus is <coughs> still there. Remember? Still, yeah. Uh, I remember three Rancor in hand right now. Not scour. I think that looked like a Moreland haunt that he picked up. Yeah, I think so. Um, did the scour hit a Geist of Saint Traft? It looks, it could be, or it could have been a cavern. Does he, does he play cavern? He does. Okay, just one. I just see kind of that gold edge. Yeah, it, it was a Geist. Okay. All right, we see his hand has that image, that pike. And he's tilted it so we can't see it any better. Getting a little louder in here. So I think we can get a little louder. As the room fills up with people slowly getting ready to join in on the legacy action. 
Lays the Moreland Haunt. Uh, so, Ranker goes to the graveyard when he bounced the mirror, yes, and then when it goes to the graveyard, it goes back to, uh, yeah. back to Jason's because hand. Because it goes to the graveyard from play, then it comes back to the hand. Yeah, it, that wasn't a bounce in response to the Ranker. No. The Ranker had already been in play. Yes. Enchanting the, yes. the mirror. If the Ranker was being cast, targeting the mirror, and then the mirror got bounced, yes, the Ranker would be gone. Right, if the that, Ranker was still in the stack. But right, that was be... not the sick the case. The yeah. Ranker was in play. And we see a Rune Chanter's Pike. So Pike on the Augur, and that's a, that's a threatening Augur of Bolas. And Delver, look at this. Preston Stone tapping out. Wow, that is some scary star, scary stuff. Um, now, representing the gut shot for that Ink Moth Nexus, because we know there's a forest, and that, I mean, that does that uh, enchant, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, activate Ink Moth Nexus, three rankers on it. I mean, that's it's not, seven it's poison. Not, it's not, not enough. Kill, but it's, it's not close. the kill, but yeah, it's very close. I mean, heck, I might just activate... Um, uh, enchant, 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 and then swing with everybody. So, how many cards? How big is that pike making that auger? I see. I know, we know there were three vapor snags. Uh, at least a ponder, a thought scour, a mana leak. Big, so, big? Yeah, pretty big. So it's like a 7 3. Rancor. So it looks like activating Moth Nexus, Rancor number one. Rancor. Rancor number two. Rancor. <coughs> Excuse me. Rancor number three. And. The question is is it going to be just the Ink Moth or is it going to be everybody? If it's everybody, he's tossing away one of his creatures to kill the Delver. Just the Ink Moth. Yeah, I mean, he would uh, <coughs> he would toss away both of his creatures, most likely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Toss away and both of them. To one kill of a and just just to kill a Delver, basically. That would be the only mm -hmm. benefit of attacking with those. I like just the Ink Moth Nexus plan because right. now that Delver has to flip, which it did not. Right. He so doesn't have a Moreland Haunt. At this point, yeah. Okay. So the Moreland Haunt will help uh, block that Ink Moth Nexus, but a Ranker on it. Gives it trample. Well, you can give it first strike with the pike. All right, well, we've got a phantasmal image. Copy Image on the auger. And auger sees... A bunch of nothing. Like a taxi and probe, thought scour. And a geist. Well, at least he gets a card out of it, right? It's not a... <laughs> it's not actually a bunch of nothing. He didn't whiff on the auger. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. Jason has a <coughs> four gut shot of his own. One of those off the top could deal with a potential blocker in the form of Moreland Hawn as well. We know he's, I believe he's drawn Forest's Forest for the last couple of turns. I don't know that we, he has a new card in hand. We know he's got three Rancor and a Wild Defiance. Yep, that's his hand. Is that his hand? Yeah. And let's see off the top. Oh, what was that? It was missed out. Uh... But he cannot, like, so at this point he can't equip the pike. So Moreland Haunt is live, but a ranker on the Iker Claw Mirror, I think, wins game one here for Jason. Right? Yeah, I think so. So activated Ink Moth Nexus. I said Iker Claw Mirror, I meant, I meant Ink Moth Nexus. I think he's going to go ranker on each of the three creatures. Yeah, I mean, that works too. <laughs> I, he's, he's definitely uh, diversifying here. Oh, no, he should have put it on the Nexus, but I guess he's still probably fine here. I just thought, I think just the Nexus with the Rancor wins. Because I don't believe Preston has an answer. He has just a Moreland Haunt token that just gets trampled over. So. Ooh, we did not know the Snapcaster yeah, was there. Yeah, I did not see the Snapcaster. This actually is really huge. So Snapcaster comes down, finds Vapor Snag. Oh wow, it has to hit the Nexus though. And that means he dies. Yeah, the Snapcaster on Vapor Snag, he has to hit the Nexus or he dies. 
And because he can't do that, then he's got a 3-1 Trampler. He has to block the Icker Claw, and the Icker Claw then becomes a 3-3 um, three, three plus 4, so it's a 7-3 Trampler. 3-1 and 7-3, the 7-3 gets first struck, but the 3-1, even with all those things there, it's, right. it's going to be enough. It's just over, so overwhelming. I mean, triple ranker certainly helps when you're able to, especially just the way he was able to just use them and it, it was just like this pump spell that he kept having access to. So, game one goes to Jason Bolkowski versus Preston Stone here in the semifinals of the StarCityGames.com Open Series yeah. in Denver, Colorado. And uh, it's, worth, it's worth noting before we go on to our trivia question that if Jason had played that really aggressively, Jason would have easily been defeated by Preston Stone's triple early Vapor Snags. Yeah, well, I mean, I was saying, I didn't see the, uh, the Snapcaster either, so I didn't think he had an answer to the, uh, the Ink Moth Nexus. And so I, yeah. was, I was thinking, you know, just put a rank or a yeah. Nexus, that's enough right there. But uh, yeah, that's because I haven't been playing the yeah. Infect deck. I, I, I like Jason's play much better. You have a trivia question for us. I do. So uh, we're going to give away six months of free right. premium access on the StarCityGames.com. Uh, and uh, we're going to ask you guys a question. You guys tweet your answer with the hashtag SCG Premium, which is right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. Down there. Uh, and one correct answer will win six months of free premium. Yeah. As long as you are one of the people that answers correctly with that hashtag, you will be selected at random. One of you will get six free months. What's the question? So the question, we have uh, we have Jason Bolkowski here with Infect, and uh, he's trying to make it into the finals here versus Preston Stone. Uh, so what city was the open, open series in the last time Infect made the finals? Wow, so he's trying to repeat that feat. Yes, he if is. If not exceed it. That's right, he is trying to make the finals, and uh, last time Infect did not win, but it did make the finals. Yeah. So what city? What city was the Open yeah. Series in the last time Infect made the finals? Make sure you tweet your answers, hashtag SCG Premium. Yep. And uh, we're gonna go now to the sideboard of this Infect match. Okay, I always like Spellskite when it comes to um, fighting against cards like Vapor Snag um, and Gutshot. You know they're in an opposing deck? Well, bring in Spellskite. Spellskite answers a lot of the problems you have. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fantastic there against a deck with a lot of removal, and Delver has tons. I mean, we saw four Vapor Snags cast in that game, three of which were natural Vapor Snags, one of which was off a of Snapcaster, but. Uh, and that's not counting any gut shots, which we know uh, Preston packs four in the main. Yeah. I would not mind if I were Jason to bring in one Viridian Corruptor as a Green Sun Zenith target to kill Rune Chanter's Pike. Right, yeah, that Pike can really get out of hand. And it's actually the first strike almost seems like the more relevant part yeah, in this match. Yeah, the first strike is way more important than uh, the actual power. Yeah, I mean, in this match, just as we saw there, uh, we saw opportunities for him to attack with the Iker Claw Mirror, but the Augur of Bolas was holding that pike. So the first strike scared off the Iker Claw Mirror in that particular situation. Yeah, on the other side of the table, I really think that Delver ends up needing to become more of a control deck. Um, and so as a result, I think what we're going to see is Phantasmal Image, Mental Misstep, Negate, and Divine Offering all coming in. And what I think is going to go out of, the, out of there is, uh, I think, Man Leak has to go. Um, I don't think you have any time for a card like Man Leak. And uh, I'm actually not so excited about Geist of St. Traft in the matchup because it comes to the party so late in the game when it comes to what can happen. Yeah, uh, I, I was looking at Tallrand. He's got two copies in the board, and uh, it seems so slow, but at the same time, if, it's, if it hits, it's got the opportunity to provide Preston with just a ton of blockers. Yes. And, uh, you know, flying blockers, which is very significant, as uh, we uh, saw right there. A part of the problem is, you notice at the end of the game, Preston only had two cards in his hand. By the time you get to that point, you can just be, be um, tapped out, because the Infect deck can threaten to kill you at such an early stage in the game, that if you are, you know, hanging back your free spells or anything like that, you're just going to, you know, get run over. So it sounds like uh, yeah, Michael, Michael Lee. Lee with, uh, I believe he's playing the green-white aggro. Yeah, yeah green-white. Green -white. He is in the finals. Michael Lee. It's going to be green-white aggro versus somebody. 
Yeah, so it's gonna be green white aggro versus Delver again if Preston takes this match, or green white aggro versus Infect. So it sounds like Michael Lee took a game, and then game two, uh, his opponent just got stuck on land and couldn't get into the game. So, a quick match on the other side of the bracket. These guys shuffling up here for game two. And players are trickling into the room to uh, sign up for the Legacy Open coming up in just a little while. We'll right. be bringing you guys coverage of that starting with round three. Yep, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, they will let me, you know, give you guys coverage from the floor. See if I can get a camera, a remote camera, follow me around in my Legacy Adventure today, let Joey do the booth by himself. But uh, we can I don't it. know, I'm not sure if my director will let that happen. <laughs> We just get a, like a helmet cam. We yeah, just helmet put, cam. Put a helmet you know, on you with a little camera. Something like that, or just have like a. We could have a, a second unit just follow behind me with a camera. Yeah. Field reporting. Exactly. I mean, watch me. You know, as I play some deck that's not ready for prime time in the Legacy Open. Oh, so you, you actually want to play in the Open. You weren't just going and, and interviewing oh, no, players gonna, in the field. Play you were just it. gonna. Yeah. It was just just uh, follow you around. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. <laughs> what deck would you be playing? Um, one of the ones I brought. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what deck would you be playing if you had uh, access to all the cards? I'd be playing, uh, uh, well, with all of the cards, so I, just mean, what I would don't you... even know how to think of Actually, I'd probably be playing Green White Prison. <laughs> yeah? Okay. That's interesting. That's one I'd like to see on camera. Not something you see very often. There's something awesome uh, about Tabernacle. <laughs> Well, and we see the opening very similar to before. Ink Moth on play, turn one. Preston leads with an island and a Thought Scour at the end of Jason's turn. Thought Scour hits, uh, was it Probe and uh, Vapor Snag? Ooh, double gut shot, mental misstep. Preston with zero pressure, but all kinds of interaction. Cavern, Delver, Glacial Fortress. Well, there's that pressure. He was. Uh, Hoping to find. It's not a great ponder. It's, I mean, two lands. He, I believe he only has those two, though, so might be fine. Grabs the Delver, casts the Delver. Turn two for Jason Bolkowski. See that gut shot. Gut shots the Delver. Now Preston has an opportunity to mental misstep this, but he does not. I like that. Decides to uh, yeah, save his misstep for something more important. Yeah, he is not the beat down here. And now we have a gut shot from Jason. Gut shot, misstep, misstep. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Boom. Oh, okay. So way, uh, Jason way better. swings in with his Ink Moth Nexus. Ink Moth gets targeted with gut shot. Jason tries to misstep it. Preston has that misstep, as we mentioned, and he uses it to misstep Jason's misstep. And you see the wisdom Resulting there of Preston in, yeah. holding back, not protecting the Delver, because that's not the important part of the fight. So Ink Moth Nexus is successfully gut shot, but Jason did uh, play, his, play a second Ink Moth Nexus as his second land drop there, so there is still the threat of a Nexus on the table. Spell Skite. Spell Skite from Jason to that's follow up Preston's, uh, Preston's Rune Channer's Pike which was just played Preston's last turn. So, on the table, a Rune Chanter's Pike for Preston Stone and a Spell Skite for Jason Bolkowski. Ooh, a fourth land to go with his uh, four mana Restoration Angel. Does he have a Restoration Angel? Oh yeah. Angel? I didn't quite see it. I must not have seen that. I thought, his, I thought we saw his hand and there was no pressure in it. Another right. Ink Moth. Jason with all the Nexuses. Taps one to activate the other, and swings in. This could go really badly for him. Yeah, Spellskite doesn't protect it from being blocked. There's, There's the Restoration the angel. angel. He's, I'll pay two life. Yeah, Bless he's gonna guy. go ahead and give his uh, his Ink Moth Nexus pro white with Apostle's Blessing. 
and gets in for one poison. So Preston Stone, just a little bit poisoned. One tenth. One tenth. That's funny. Was it, uh, did he, did he get in or did he, uh, was it after declare blockers? I assumed it was a pro-white in response to the angel. I don't see a token on the angel, so I imagine it's one poison. So we, okay, there's no poison on the screen is what. <laughs> yeah, two poison, two poison. There okay, we there you go. Are. I'm sorry, yeah, so what, did he hit, he hit him with that ne nexus earlier? I forgot about that. Well, Angel with a pike coming in for Preston Stone. Fast clock. It's kind of a scary, uh, scary angel. I'd be scared of that angel coming around trying to hit me with a pike. I think I'd be scared of the angel without the pike. <laughs> Chris Pakula with Atlantis as his, uh, his, his attempt to answer that. Uh, I'm not gonna say whether that's correct or incorrect, but I just wanted to point it out. Right, right. The listener Elf joins the table for Jason Bukowski. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan, joined in the booth here by Joey Pasco. We are at Denver, Colorado. I should say in Denver, Colorado here for SCG Live. This is the Star City Games Open Series. And you see a blocker come out. So Angel trying to get in. Nexus declared as a blocker and then immediately Pro blessed white. yet again. Pro white. Jason being Oh, Oof. he's got a spell sky. Oh, spell sky! What are you doing? Yeah, not not what I expected there. Oh, the spell sky spell does have sky. a. Uh, You've got an ability. Costs two life, but it's a good one. Yeah, so he I think accidentally let the spell sky, or just let the the nexus die there. Maybe forgot mm. about the spell sky. Maybe it's all part of his grand master plan. He, yeah, he's, he's just trying to lull Preston into a false sense of security. Might be. He, he recognized that this game wasn't going very well, and he was like, you know, I'm just going to try to make this guy think thoughts that uh, will make me win in the third game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jason Bolkowski at a precarious three life. And he's like, yeah, the spell skites. So, I see my spell so was I correct then? That was the first poison now? <laughs> okay, so a little Jason bit of miscommunication. I, packs J it up, packs it in. Yeah. So let's begin with talking yeah. about the sideboarding for the third game here. Yeah, I mean, how much different do you think well, the, the only sideboards real, get? I think the only real difference for these players is that Preston Stone could consider changing up his sideboarding based on going second. Um, I don't know whether or not Preston um, kept in Mana Leaks going first, but going second, I do not think that he should have Mana Leaks at all. I don't like them in the matchup to begin with, but going second, those Mana Leaks are going to come so late to the party so often. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Uh, how big of a deal do you think is it is to actually be on the play for, uh, for the Infect deck? Well... It's, in Constructed, you know, I think being on the play is a really huge deal. Um, I know that Zach Hill, who is a soon-to-be departing member of Wizards R&D, he mentioned that they had done some um, statistical analysis on um, decks, or not decks, on play on Magic Online, mm -hmm. and found that play or draw, it was very close to 50-50, period, v like straight up, in who won the match. So there would be a claim there that there is no difference just in general. However, I am willing to bet that that statistic was not um, accounting for limited versus constructed. Um, ever since Worlds last year, 
I've been doing some incredibly meticulous record keeping when it came to playtesting on Magic Online. And one of the things I was seeing was that for every single deck and every single matchup, going first was a minimum bump of 10% for that game. Wow. So some decks are even more wild that way. Um, I, I think that Jason Bolkowski's Infect deck is one that has even more swing on going first. Uh, yeah, and that's that's how I uh, that's how I was seeing it as well. I feel like you know it if you break it down without looking at the deck archetypes, I think I can see you know a more of a 50 50 kind of thing. But I think certain decks are just set up to really take advantage of going first. And, yeah, uh, in fact, is one of them. In fact, I mean, super aggressive. Every turn matters. So if uh, you get three turns and your opponent only gets two, that's you know, that's all you need. Like yeah. that one extra turn. It, you, it's also part of like think about it as the percentage of the game, right? Uh, when Jason goes first, he's his turn is a hundred percent of the game until he passes the turn to Preston. Right now it's fifty fifty. Now Jason's second turn is is you know, 66% of the game on Jason's side and 33% on Preston's side. So it's just, it's interesting to think how big, you know, as the game goes on, every turn is a smaller and smaller percentage, yeah. but Infect is a deck that is meant to capitalize on those first few turns. The, the games don't last more than a few turns. That's and right. so going first is a actually a large yeah. percentage oh. of the game. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And by way of example, I just pulled up one of my spreadsheets for mm. one of the decks that I've been playing lately. And game one on the play, it goes 77% game wins, and game one on the draw, 53% game wins. So, speaking of percentages, Jason, with the 100% of the games with the Ink Moth Nexus on turn one, very it's impressive. It's almost like it's a turn one Goblin Guide every turn game. Yeah, so uh, Preston Stone with turn one Delver, not too shabby. Gonna and see a Spell Skite. Now, maybe he'll wrap this Spell Skite really hard with his fist to remember that it's yeah. there. Yeah, put it on top of his library or something. There's a Gut Shot. This time he protects the Delver. The Delver. And pr no. Yeah, this Preston is a the much up. different situation. I actually think that Jason Bolkowski might have messed up here. I think perhaps he should have cast Gut Shot first mm -hmm. before the Spell Skite was on the table. Because now, Preston Stone, he knows that his cards that are his removal are not going to work on anything. Yeah. Because there's that spell skit there, so he might as well protect the Delver. You notice in the second game, Preston wisely did not protect the Delver. I think showing the spell skit first was a mistake. It's a good point. I, I like the logic. So uh, Delver has flipped, and Ponder resolving here. Preston draws looks like a probe, I believe, off that ponder, and we're going to see it. So we're going to see what Jason has in store for this particular game. Apostles Blessing, Green Sun Zenith, Spellskite number two, and Viridian Corruptor. So a little bit of pike protection. A lot of creature protection as far as, you know, his threats. No actual threats, but a Green Sun Zenith to potentially find one and a blessing to protect one as well. So a lot of ways right there for Jason to protect his nexus or whatever he might search, uh, search for with that Green Sun Zenith. Part of the problem that Jason has at this moment, he's on a very quick clock actually. Yeah, and he has actually very little pressure of his own. I mean, he has no pump spells available. His mistake in the last game, I don't know that it influenced very much. Um, I think he was gonna lose that game anyway. Another Delver. Preston with uh, in with the, the Insectile Aberration and another Delver on board. Jason with just a Spell Skite, a Forest, and an Ink Moth Nexus on his side. I think he's going to Green Suns for one? No, he's no. going to cast a Glistener Elf off the top. And leaving himself with one mana for Apostles Blessing? I don't even like that. I think that you should cast the uh, Green Suns for one and then potentially be able to double threat in a future turn. That there is a Ghost Quarter from Preston Stone. Wow, that's actually not yeah. a ability that Spellsky can protect an Ink Moth from. Yeah. One of two Ghost Quarters from Preston. Both main. And Insectile Aberration in for three more. And uh, other Delver, a little stubborn, didn't flip. But a Ponder is going to attempt to set up a... Uh, set that up for next turn. He does have a gut shot available in the top three that will flip that Delver. 
at second delver. Yeah, he's trying to decide if he wants to keep it, though. It's a pretty weak couple of cards. Yeah, it is. He, it's a, is it a worth third making, delver and an island. Is it worth making the... I mean, he can actually draw the delver, play the delver, and then have three flipped delvers. So that's not as weak as I was initially thinking. I didn't see that that was a delver. But Apparently he's, like, he's oh, not getting rid of it either. Yeah. It doesn't give him anything to fight against, let's say, that... Uh, that Jason does something um, aggressive and impressive, mm -hmm. um, that puts Preston in a position where it's a pure race, where he's already got that race-like situation underway. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I think it would have been pretty impressive for him to draw, play Delver, and then flip it next turn. He's at zero poison right now, and, uh, I don't know, I think I may have gone for it, just maybe, maybe that was wrong. Oh, but, Augur with... Augur Bolas hits the board, but does not find a single spell in the top three. Three lands, pushed to the bottom, but that might be a good thing too. I mean, just the fact that he whiffed kind of stinks, but pushing three lands to the bottom in a situation where Preston doesn't really want any more lands <laughs> that badly. I think he, he would rather have spells. I don't think that was such a bad thing. So, Iker Claw Mirror from Jason Bolkowski here. And that resolves. No attacks. Oh, boy. Uh, Delver flips. Delver flips off of a vapor snag. I think that this game looks pretty wrapped up for Preston Stone. Yeah, Jason J is just clogged on, on mana. Maybe he should run two less like Preston. He drives more <laughs> than that. Apparently. For you old-timers, that's the old thawing glacier rule. The first thing that happens when you thaw a land out of your deck is you draw a land. Thaw and draw. It doesn't make any mathematical sense, it's just how it seems to work out. Augur Bolus number two for Preston and... He's deciding between Vapor Snag here and Ghost Quarter. Meanwhile, a cloud comes over the sky. Yeah. looming shadow over the table. He goes with the Vapor Snag being open. And sees Island Ponder, ponder Delver, so he gets a Ponder off of that Augur. Passes the turn. Jason Bolkowski has a That's very it. short window. Yeah, it's it's not enough. And uh, Preston Stone with Blue White Delver goes to the finals to place uh, to face Green White Aggro, piloted by uh, was it Andrew Lee or Michael Lee? I'm sorry. It's going to be Michael Lee versus Preston Stone.